Hi, my name is Leia Demokuski, and today I'm going to be talking about Cinnamomum verum J. Pressel, or simply cinnamon. Cinnamomum verum is a perennial flowering tree in the Lauraceae family. The bark of the tree is ground into a spice, which has been used for centuries. Cinnamon's primary active constituent is cinnamaldehyde, and the plant as a whole is generally regarded as safe. It has a variety of antibiotic and antimicrobial properties and is a promising treatment for type 2 diabetes. Cinnamonum verum is also sometimes called Cinnamonum zelancium, Celian cinnamon, or true cinnamon. To the right is an illustration of cinnamon leaves. In some areas of the world, such as the Union of Comoros, owning a cinnamon tree is a source of pride. The cinnamon tree is an evergreen tree indigenous to Sri Lanka. Its bark is made of brownish-red quills, which can be seen in the photograph to the right. It has ovular green leaves, small yellow flowers, and purple fruit with seeds inside. It is an invasive plant in many parts of the world. Different soil conditions give cinnamon grown in certain areas a unique flavor, and in Sri Lanka, cinnamon is classified by this taste component. Pani Karuundu describes sweet, Pani Miris Karuundu describes sweet and hot, Rasa Karuundu describes tasty, Swanda Karuundu describes fragrant, and Tita Karuundu describes bitter cinnamon. Although cinnamon is a well-known spice, there are several different species of cinnamon, each with different chemical constituents. Cinnamonum verum is considered true cinnamon and is shown on the right. Cinnamon sticks are harvested by shaving the bark of the tree, which naturally produces the curled shape. Cassia, or Cinnamonum aromatasium, is shown on the left. In the middle is the cinnamon that you would typically find at the grocery store and is considered to be lower in quality and probably is cassia. Cinnamon was primarily used as a spice traditionally and has been documented as an integral part of the spice trade since the Roman era. Arabs were the first to acquire cinnamon from India but kept the location of the spice a secret since it was so highly valued. Due to this secrecy, Cinnamon was one of the first plants that explorers ventured to find. Egyptians used cinnamon in their embalming rituals, and men often wore the essential oils as perfume. Cinnamon is referenced several times in the Bible and is one of the ingredients in the holy anointing oil shown to the right. Cinnamon was also drunk as a tea and used as a food preservative. Traditionally, cinnamon was used as a treatment for a broad range of ailments, including eye infections and stomach aches. It was used topically for stings or bites and was also used as an antidiuretic and digestive aid. The picture on the right is a photograph of a wood carving depicting the harvest of cinnamon. In the Indian Materia Medica, cinnamon is referenced as a treatment based on its medicinal properties. For example, tikarasam increases appetite and produces dry mouth, ushnavirvam raises body temperature, increases circulation, and increases appetite, and lagu increases digestion. There are over 100 chemical constituents in cinnamon, which together are responsible for its unique chemical properties. The largest of these is cinnamaldehyde, which is responsible for the distinct smell and flavor of cinnamon. Its structure, shown on the bottom left, contains an aromatic ring. Cinnamaldehyde inhibits amino acid decarboxylase activity, which allows it to act as an antioxidant. Cinnamon bark can have anywhere from 6,000 to 30,000 parts per million of cinnamaldehyde. The leaves are primarily eugenol, which is a phenol propene. The Food and Drug Administration monitored cinnamon quality by measuring the eugenol solubility in potassium hydroxide. It must be 80 to 88 percent soluble. Cinnamaldehyde and eugenol are also the primary constituents of the essential oils. Mucilage is found in high amounts in cinnamon bark. Cinnamon has a large amount of biological activity, and numerous studies have indicated its effectiveness in vitro and in vivo. One study demonstrated cinnamon's effectiveness across a broad range of bacteria and found the essential oils to be particularly effective against B. cereus, as shown in the graph adapted from the study's data. Besides the biological activities listed on the previous slide, Cinnamon has been found to inhibit growth of melanoma in vitro and in vivo, and has been shown to decrease histamine and barium-induced smooth muscle contractions in guinea pig trachea. 
Much of the biological activity of cinnamon is due to cinnamaldehyde's chemical properties. Its phenolic compounds act as an electron donor to catalyze the reaction of hydrogen peroxide to water. Cinnamon oil is also an effective treatment for head lice, or pedunculus humanus capitis, shown in the photograph at the bottom of the slide. Further, it decreases the minimal inhibitory concentration of amacin needed to kill resistant acinobacter bacteria. As drug resistance continues to rise, this finding may become especially important. Although there are several rumors about cinnamon as the new treatment for type 2 diabetes, there are few well-controlled studies that document the causal relationship between cinnamon intake and diabetes management. Several studies have demonstrated cinnamon's ability to lower blood pressure, and cinnamaldehyde has been found to lower blood plasma glucose levels. However, in many studies, authors did not specify which species of cinnamon was used. The majority of studies which do specify use both cinnamonum verum and cassia, which does not allow us to determine which plant is responsible for the effects. Therefore, the overall data is inconclusive regarding the effects of cinnamonum verum specifically on humans. Certain European countries have restricted the importation of cinnamon due to high sulfur content. The sulfur does not come from the plant itself, rather it is the result of fumigation with sulfur dioxide during processing. It is not known how this sulfur affects the medicinal properties of the plant. New regulations have been put in place to set standards for maximum amounts of sulfur allowed. Contradictions specific to cinnamonum verum include fever of unknown origin, pregnancy, ulcers, allergic reaction, and oral lesions. These are only associations with the use and may not be causal, as cinnamon use obviously cannot cause pregnancy. Cinnamaldehyde has been found to irritate mucous membranes, and some people have reactions to cinnamon-flavored gum or toothpaste. Cinnamon has also been found to be teratogenic to chick embryos, so it is not recommended to use cinnamon in large quantities while pregnant or trying to become pregnant. Cinnamon is most commonly used as a food or spice and has been incorporated into many foods as flavorings. There are also several products on the market advertised as cinnamon supplements, especially for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, but few have been studied for efficacy. Opticare has been found to be an effective treatment for eye inflammation in rabbits and is made of 0.5% cinnamon. Studies have suggested that 10 to 30% of people who use home remedies to treat their diabetes use cinnamon. However, the study did not inquire about the specific type of cinnamon used. In some countries where abortion and birth control are not available, cinnamon is used as part of an abortifactant cocktail. This use of cinnamon is not safe nor recommended, and the efficacy has not been studied. To conclude, cinnamonum verum is both a food and a medicine that has immense cultural value. It has been important in societies for centuries and is still widely used today. The unique chemical properties of cinnamaldehyde produce a wide variety of biological activities, and cinnamon is a promising plant in the future of medicine.